All right, boys and girls, something new in the thermal paste market. So if you are an active follower of Debao's videos, which I hope you are, then uh, you may have seen him using some uh, pink colored, almost like uh, cryonal looking uh, uh, thermal paste in some of his fairly recent videos over some time. Then that's actually a brand new thermal paste they are bringing out to the market right now. And it's called the Cryonaut Extreme. There hasn't been that much hype around the thermal paste, like no official reviews or videos about it. So I think this is one of the earliest videos about that new thermal paste on YouTube. So I accidentally saw that the new thermal paste was uh, uh, listed on their website. Sometime before I tried to ask like privately about the pink colored thermal paste from the founder of Thermal Grizzly, but I didn't get a response. And I, once I saw that the thermal paste was listed, I sent another email, but no response once again. So of course, then I uh, just went on searching and I wanted to get uh, some amount of this new thermal paste from them to, uh, into my hands, because I'm of course very interested if someone really develops or develops brand new thermal paste, like brand new formula with extreme overclocking in mind, uh, then it has to be good, or I hope it's very good. So, uh, of course, I searched on price search engines and so on, and it was, I think many of you guys will be buying this thermal paste from Case King. It was listed there, but it wasn't available for purchase, like, like no uh, delivery information or whatsoever. Uh, but one, some other, well, not many, but some other uh, big uh, uh, retailers had it listed, and I saw that one of those big stores had like three jars available on their eBay listing. So the price was of course high, but I wanted to buy one uh, jar of this thermal paste from them. So I think this thermal paste will only come in uh, one uh, uh, quantity size. So this is the largest available size, well, the only one that's available at the moment. So this is a 33 point, uh, I think it's 33 point uh, 84 grams, well, nine milliliters of this thermal paste in a one, one single jar and it's not cheap. It is not cheap but there's a reason behind it. Long ago I spoke with uh, De Bauer about thermal paste uh, in general and he already stated that it's, that it's impossible to make current thermal pastes like Cryonaut, GC Extreme, KPX much better without letting the overall cost going out of hands. So uh, you can improve the thermal paste in general, but then the overall cost will become really, really high. But I think they are trying that now with the Cryonaut Extreme. So the overall target audience for this Cryonaut Extreme will be quite marginal. Like people who use thermal paste a lot and mainly like the high-end overclocking community. Because if you have watched my high-end thermal paste comparison videos and even like the thermal Thermal right TFX review video where I compare the high end thermal pastes against each other once again. You can easily notice that the overall difference between high end thermal pastes will be extremely marginal. It's Im nearly impossible to state a clear winner. They are all very, very good, like GC Extreme, Cryonaut, or well, now nowadays Cryonaut is always the uh, liquid helium edition. The uh, original Cryonaut was replaced with the uh, uh, liquid, heli liquid, liquid helium sticker one because it has smaller particle size. It has same therm thermal performance, but it has uh, better like cracking pro uh, properties on cold. And uh, then Kimping Cooling KPX, they are all very, very good thermal paste when it comes to temperature performance. The uh, When I compared KPX against like an OEM no name thermal paste, the temperature difference was only like six degrees there. So many could even uh, expect higher differences, but it was only six degrees. So uh, will you or any other normal user, are you willing to pay any sum for a thermal paste that will give you half a degree improvement in temperatures on air cooling? I would guess no. So you get the idea. But if a very high end and expensive thermal paste like this can reach much colder temperatures, for example, if all other high-end competitor thermal pastes fail at minus 155 degrees Celsius on LN2 on a modern graphics card, on a modern graphics card like 2080 Ti 
or the upcoming uh, 3000 series card from Nvidia. And this very expensive thermal paste can reach even full pot temperatures. So 30 to 40 degrees colder temperatures and it will get 50 to 100 megahertz higher clock speed on the GPU and it will be the clear winner. Then yes, there is a huge difference between those thermal pastes. So there is actual like a benefit on spending a lot more on the thermal paste. So you get the idea, I think. So uh, I will expect that they will not produce or sell this thermal paste in tiny quantities like one, uh, like one gram size tube. But that's just my personal feeling. I don't know about their plans. But this thermal paste uh, overview and like uh, my thoughts, they are completely uh, bought from my own purse. So this is not by any means a sponsored video. So I really, I bought the thermal paste from the eBay listing and it was quite expensive. So the thermal paste did cost over 90 euros for the, well, almost 34 gram size jar plus shipping. So the gram price, even at this huge quantity, is already like close to three euros per gram. It's much more, it's much more expensive than, than uh, the normal Cryonaut or KPX or GC Extreme in either of the quantities. So uh, that's just my personal feeling. So do not expect this thermal paste to be cheap. If they sell this even in a one gram size tube, the one gram size tube might cost even 10 euros. So 10 euro prior, 10 euros for one gram could be possible. Eight, well at least five. So you, I'm sure you'll get the idea already. But let's just open up this box, look at the main figures, and then just uh, uh, talk a little bit what's coming up. So I thought about like telling my own opinions about this thermal paste now, and then make a proper test video later because I want to make like a new high-end thermal paste comparison with the Cryonaut Extreme in it, the normal Cryonaut, GC Extreme and KPX because it's a lot more easier for people to find that video when the main title is stated as like high-end thermal paste comparison or what's the best thermal paste for 2020, I mean in 2020 or 2021 compared to uh, like reviewing a single thermal paste. And uh, I have other thermal pastes, uh, which I have got in uh, recent weeks as well. So back in uh, June or July, I went out searching on the Chinese websites like AliExpress, Alibaba, Taobao and so on. I tried to find the best possible thermal pastes on those sites, no matter what cost. And I could find like uh, this, well, very no name snowman. MTG 10, so I think this is 10 gram size tube, and it has the same temperature performance figure as the Cryonaut Extreme. So this is 14.2 uh, watts per meter Kelvin. The previous normal Cryonaut was like 12.4, I think. I have the packaging over here. 12.5. So 12.5 on the original Cryonaut. So uh, based on the like the packaging figures, this has a tiny bit more than the Cryonaut Extreme, but this is this will surely be much, much worse than the Cryonaut Extreme. But I want to test these Chinese thermal pastes as well, but in a separate video, of course. Not in like the most high-end thermal paste comparison, because I do not consider those no-name pastes as top-of-the-line options, unless they perform exceptionally well. And other thermal paste here as well, so Thermagic EX, 14.6 watts per meter Kelvin. I really doubt that figure over there, but let's give them a try. These were actually quite expensive, like uh, well, like between 10 and 20 euros for those uh, tube sizes. But yeah, so nearly three euros per gram. So you are paying around 100 euros for this 34 or 9 milliliter size jar with shipping. So this, like the large or the huge tube, 30 gram size tube or jar from Kimping Cooling will be cheaper, of course. So price-wise, this is uh, already higher, but let's just give it a try. If this can run graphics cards at full pot, it has its place uh, in the, on the market and the overclocking world, then it's definitely better than other thermal pastes in its own way. So at the moment, I don't really care about how good this will be on air or water cooling. So if it's the same as other thermal pastes on air or water cooling, temperature-wise, but it can run full, it can run 
graphics cards at full pot, then it's already insanely good thermal paste. That's just my personal feeling nowadays. But yeah, backside, so this is sealed or retail seal, so I, I haven't opened, up, opened it up yet. 14.2 watts per meter Kelvin. They have the viscosity levels over here, or the figures. And uh, weight, uh, and then, yeah, temperature range from uh, minus 250 to plus 350. So, yeah, liquid helium approved if you can afford such cooling. And 9 milliliters, which should be close to 34 grams. So, let's open up this box. So, I think this is quite simple packaging compared to the previous farm pastes from Thermal Grizzly. You get a guide booklet over there. Just how to spread thermal paste overall, but surely if you are buying this, I guess you already know. Certificate, verify, verification code, yeah. So very simple, you get the large jar. Well, it really feels odd that can they really fit? Does this really weigh 34 grams? Looks much smaller in its own way compared to that large 30 gram size tube of KPX, but doesn't matter. And, well, at least, yeah, three plastic applicators. That's what you get with this packaging. So, uh, let me know, let me know in, in the comments down below what you think. Do we need a new high-end thermal paste like this? I think yes, when it comes to uh, uh, extreme overclocking. Just recently, like yesterday, if you, are, uh, if you know, uh, Tech Lab from Brazil, they managed to uh, get their RTX 2080 Ti Hall of Fame card to full pot using this brand new thermal paste and they managed to overclock their 2080 Ti core frequency up to 3 GHz. So that is an insane result and they almost beat uh, Kimpin's uh, result in GPU Pi 1 billion uh, which was made with Titan uh, V card like two and a half years ago. But yeah. But of course, that card uh, didn't only have this thermal paste, the GPU was also lapped. So the issue with the 2080 Ti GPUs is that the GPUs are very uneven from uh, the factory. So uh, when looking at my uh, uh, mount pictures, so after removing the LM2 pot uh, after a session, it's very easy to see from the thermal paste spread that the GPU is very uneven. So it's not only about the thermal paste that's being used, it's also about lapping the GPU die if you want to get to full pot. And that's what they did, but they had to use many practice mounts to get to full pot. Like use backplate, use very even pressure on each of the corners. And they of course they used the Cryonaut Extreme. But the Greek guys, or the so-called OGS, also got to full pot like one and a half years ago. And they used normal Cryonaut for that. So the I'm, I personally think that the key is more in the lapping than in the thermal paste. So if you lap the GPU well, you can definitely, or I just feel you can definitely get to a full pot even with KPX, maybe even with GC Extreme. But just saying. So let's test this soon in a proper video. I will also add, so I will add the Cryonaut Extreme, the normal Cryonaut or the Crown Out Liquid Helium Edition, which is the new standard, or which is the standard nowadays. And I will also get some uh, GC Extreme to the comparison as well. I haven't used GC Extreme a lot. I mean that, I mean that much uh, in five years after the release of the Thermal Grizzly uh, thermal, pa thermal Pastes. But I, I want to add that to the uh, comparison because I still consider GC Extreme uh, as one of the most high-end thermal paste options, although it only has fairly low, well not that low, but much lower temperature rating than Cryonaut, Cryonaut Extreme, although we don't know the accurate uh, thermal conductivity rating of the KPX, but doesn't matter. So let's test those four thermal pastes soon. I might test the Chinese pastes before that, and if they perform exceptionally well, may, we can maybe even add either of those to the comparison as well. But yeah. So leave a comment down below about what you think about this thermal paste. Does it have its place uh, on the market or is it too expensive for you? As I said, if it's exceptionally good temperature wise on LN2, I mean for LN2 overclocking, then it definitely deserves its place 
uh, on the market. So it, not, it might not be for the average Joe running a simple air cooler, but it doesn't have to be. But yeah, so thanks for watching this, uh, maybe one of the first looks at the new Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Extreme thermal pastes on YouTube. And uh, give a thumbs up if you like to see the product and uh, I will see you on the next one.